Welcome back to the Algebra 2 Summer Packet. We're going to be looking at problems 9 to 16 right now. I'm Mrs. Bazo and Ms. Pachalante and Mr. Schuler are also going to be talking to you about these problems. So on number 9, if we remember that slope is y equals mx plus b, so our slopes are right there, right where we see them. We have a slope of 4 fifths and a slope of 3 fourths. So since we have two different slopes, they're going to meet exactly one time. Okay, number 10. Number 10, we're looking at a graph and we're asked to find a couple different values here. Letter A, we're comparing the values of f of 2 and g of negative 2. So if I'm looking at a graph, I need to find the value of f of 2. 2 is my x value, so I'm just going to go over here where I'm looking at my x value 2. And I'm going to figure out which graph I'm looking at. That's this one right here, f of x. And I'm going to go up to my point on this graph, and that's right here at the point 2, 3. So therefore, the value of f of 3, I'm sorry, f of 2 is 3. For g of negative 2, I'm going to go over here to where my x is negative 2, go up to the graph that's also here at 3. There's my point negative 2, 3. So that means g of negative 2 also has a value 3. So in the middle, we're going to put a little equal sign there. Letter B, now we're going to compare the x-intercept of f of x and the y-intercept of g of x. So if I'm looking at f of x, my line here, the point where it hits the x-axis, the horizontal one, that's right here. This is at my point, negative 1, 0. So that means my x-intercept is negative 1. For g of x, the y-intercept, here's my parabola. Up here at the top, this is where it hits the y-axis, and this is at the point 0, uh, zero 4. So that means my y-intercept is value 4. So if I have to compare these, I have negative 1, I've got 4. Negative 1 is less than 4, so that's what I'm going to put in between them. And finally, for letter C, First of all, I have to figure out what f of 1 and f of 3 are and multiply them. And then I'm figuring out g of negative 2 and g of 2 and adding them up. Okay, so for f of 1, coming up to my graph at my line here, this is at 1, 2. And f of 3, I'm going to come over here at 3. And up here on f of x, this is at 3, 4. So that means my values that I want here, I have 2 and I have 4. Multiplying those together, it's going to give us 8. And let's see, we already had g of negative 2 from letter A, and this was 3. And now I need g of 2. So I'm going to come out to my x value of 2. It turns out this is actually the same point as f of 2. This is at um, 3 as well. Adding 3 and 3, that's going to give us 6. So I'm comparing the values of 8 and 6. And 8 is greater than 6, so that's what we're going to put in the middle there. All right, so now I'm handing off to Ms. Petulante for number 11 and 12. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. So let's see what we have in number 11. A rectangle has a length that's 6 inches longer than it, uh, its width. One thing I like to do is always draw a picture. So here we have a picture of a rectangle. And we're going to call this length the width, and this will be uh, the other side, uh, L4. That length. Okay, so we have that one side is six inches longer than the other, so this is going to be W plus six. And then we are trying to find a formula for the area of the rectangle. We need to know that the formula for area is to multiply the two lengths together. So we will be multiplying w with w plus 6. If we wanted to use distributive property, we would multiply this out. And there would be our final answer.
Okay, in the next problem, we are asked to write a number so that this expression would be written as a perfect square. So here you would need to know a technique. When this coefficient in front of the x squared term is one, all you need to do is look at this coefficient in front of x, divide that by two, we'll give you three, and then square that number. So here we would get nine. Nine is what we would add in the space, and now this expression would be written as a perfect square like that. So same idea here, half of negative 12 is negative six, we're gonna square that, we're gonna get 36, that's what belongs in this space. So as a, com as a perfect square, this would be written as x minus six, all squared. Last one, we would do half of seven, which is seven over two. Let's leave it as a fraction instead of converting it to a decimal. And then we're gonna square that. It gives us 49 over four. 49 over four is what belongs in this space. And then as a perfect square, it would look like this. X plus seven over two quantity squared. Okay, moving on to number 13, we got some more fun with uh, graphs, this time we're adding in a table as well. So we've got two separate columns, we need to figure out in each row which of those two from column A and column B are greater. Alright, so starting with the first row, we're comparing f of 1 and g of negative 3. So if you're f of 1, I've got this nice table up here, this is where my f of x is. So if I want to know f of 1, I'm going to go to where I have an x value of 1 in the table and just come over here to the value of f of x, that's 2. For g of negative 3, this time we're given the graph of g of x. So I'm going to come over to where my x value is negative 3, come up to this point on the graph, this is at negative 3, 1. So that means my value of g of negative 3 is equal to 1. So between these two values, the one that is greater would be f of 1. All right, second row. We're comparing the maximum value of f of x and the x-intercept of g of x. Okay, so we're looking at this table. We want to know the maximum value. All right, so looking at my function values, they start off at 5 here in that first row of that table, come up to 6. Then they come up to 9, and then after they hit 9, they come back down to 8, 2, 0, negative 10. So in this table, the maximum value of f of x would be 9. Okay, so I'm going to write that in this box here, my 9. For g of x, x-intercept, so I'm looking at this graph. The only x-intercept that I see, at least on this picture, is right here. This is at negative 2, 0. So that means my number here is going to be negative 2. And, uh, okay, so in other words, for this one, x intercept of g of x, this would be greater. So in this case, I'm going to say that x intercept of g of x, or in other words, this is the value from column B. For our letter A, this is from column A. Okay, next row, <clears throat> looking at the first one here. You don't have any uh, oh, oops, sorry. So we have, looking at one of the more greater, not the one that's less. So in this case, the one that's greater would be uh, 9 here. So I'm going to change this. Get the eraser here. All right, so let's fix this. So we want maximum value of f of x. the one from column A again. Okay, next one, letter C. Looking at difference f of 0 minus f of 4. All right, so my table I've got, my f of 0 was 8. 
f of 4 was 0, and I this by 4. 8 minus 0 is just going to be 8, and divide that by 4 is going to give us 2. For column B, g of 2 times g of 4. g of 2 is down here at negative 3. g of 4, come over here to 4, and this is at negative 2. So this multiplication is going to be negative 3 times negative 2. And that's going to give us positive 6. So looking at these two options, the one that is greater is the one from column B, g of 2 times g of 4. All right, moving on to letter D, value of f of, uh, sorry, value of x that makes f of x equal to 0. This time I'm going to be looking at the second column of this table. The value of x that gives me 0 is 4. And I'm comparing that with the value of g of negative 5 plus g of negative 3. So let's start with g of negative 5. Coming up to my graph here. That's at this point. That's marked at negative 5, 3. So I'll write my 3 down here. And I'm adding this with g of negative 3, which I already have from a previous part of this problem. This was a value of 1. 3 plus 1 is going to give us 4. So as it says in directions, if both are equal, we're just going to write equal sign here. So neither is greater than the other. And finally, letter E, we're comparing the value of A plus B, where A is the value of the input that gives us 5, and B is the value of the input that gives us negative 10. So first, the value of A, and we'll come up to my table, looking at where my output is 5. It's at the first row here, so that's value of negative 8. Okay, so negative 8 is my value of A. And I'm adding this with B. So B is the number where I get an output of negative 10, so I'm coming back up to my table. That's the value of 7. So it means I'm adding negative 8 and 7, which is equal to negative 1. And I just need to compare this with G of 4. So I'm going to come up back up to my graph. I already marked this from a previous problem. G of 4 was this negative 2. So between negative 1 and negative 2, the one that is greater is negative 1. So that was my A plus B from column A. So next we're going back to our slope formula and we're going to remember that our slope formula tells us the change up and down over the change right or left, but it's easier to think about right a lot of times. So we're looking at y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Sometimes it helps to label our points. We'll call this one x1 and y1. We'll call this one x2 and y2. Then all we have to do is plug in those values, negative 3 minus 1 because that's our y2 minus y1, negative 3 minus 1, over x2 is 7. There's a subtraction in the formula. It asks us to subtract. And then x2 is a negative 5. So we are going to take the 7 minus the negative 5. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. 7 minus negative 5 is positive 12, which gives us negative 1 third. Okay, next problem, number 15. We are asked to sketch the graph of a function. The function that we are given is a quadratic function in this form. ax squared plus bx plus c. And so we are expecting the graph of a parabola. Since the leading coefficient is negative 1, the parabola is going to open down. So first, let's find the vertex. We can use the formula, x is equal to negative b over 2a, to figure out the x-coordinate of the vertex. So here we have b is 4, and a is negative 1. So 
So that's going to give us negative 4 over negative 2, which is positive 2. To figure out the y-coordinate of the vertex, we just substitute x is 2 into our function. So we're figuring out f of 2. So we will do negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 5, and that's going to give us 9. So our vertex is at 2 comma 9. Let's plot that on the graph. Perfectly fits right there. Two, nine. Good thing our grid goes up to nine units. All right, the line of symmetry. So the line of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the vertex. Its equation is going to be x equal two. We'll mark that with a dash line. For x-intercepts, we need to set y equal to 0. So we will be solving 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. So here we're going to do a quick little factoring. Let's see. It's going to factor to negative x plus 1 and x minus 5, uh, let me check that out, negative x minus 1. So let's see, if we multiply these first terms, negative x squared, outside will give us 5x, inside will give us negative 1x, that adds up to a 4x, and a negative 1 with a negative 5 is a positive 5. So I did my factoring correct, but let me rewrite that because I almost messed it up in the beginning. So that's a subtraction. All right, so when I now set each of these factors equal to zero, I'm going to get x is negative one, and over here, x is equal to five. So my x-intercepts are negative one, and 5. So I'll plot those over here. Negative 1 and 5. All right, next I'm asked to find the y-intercept. So here what I'm going to do is substitute that x is 0. So I have y equal a negative 0 squared plus a 4 times 0 plus a 5. Well, of course, that's going to be 5. I'll squish it in right there. So our y-intercept is located right here, 0, 5. Well, I, I'm sure you can tell that we're going to have a very nice looking parabola that opens down and all of our information should fit the graph. Okay, next, the domain. The domain is not needed to sketch the graph, but we'll, um, you know, I think I'm going to sketch the graph first and I'll answer these other two questions. So here, I'm going to use the idea that the axis of symmetry means points are symmetric on either side of the parabola. So I can figure out if this y-intercept is two units to the left, then over here, there's a symmetric point two units to the right of that axis of symmetry. And now I'm gonna draw my parabola. There we go. So it's easy to look at the domain just by looking at our graph, and our domain is going to be all real numbers. I'm going to use what's called interval notation. Maybe you'll, you know about that, or maybe you'll be learning it uh, in the upcoming school year. So in the interval notation, this is what all real numbers looks like. For the range, we see that the graph does not go beyond 9, 
And so the range using interval notation will be negative infinity to nine, and we put a bracket to include the nine. So this amounts to this notation as an interval, um, sorry, as an inequality, it would look like this, y less than or equal to negative nine, sorry, positive nine, not negative nine, y less or equal to positive nine. Okay, next, the interval on which f of x is increasing. Well, if we read a graph from left to right, we see that everything to the left of our parabola, this half, in other words, would represent the y coordinate getting larger. So the interval on which the function is increasing would be from negative infinity to two. And what we do, since this is related to the domain, is use the two from our vertex because it would be everything from this direction up until two that the value of y is getting uh, larger. So now, the interval on which the function is decreasing will be the other side of the parabola. So that's from two to positive infinity. And that completes our problem. We are almost done with this problem set. This is the last one in this set. So we have this answer bank and we're trying to fill in our blanks and I'm pointing at things you can't see. Here, we've got our answer bank up here. An explicit rule for an arithmetic sequence would be what kind of a function? It would be a linear function. If we have a constant difference, we have a linear <coughs> function. I'm sorry. The recursive formula, f of zero is 20, so the first thing is 20 and f of n is 30 times f of n minus one. So recursive, we're gonna remember that it says the next term, what do we do? It represents a geometric sequence because we are multiplying by something. We have a common ratio. So it's geometric sequence. Its explicit rule would be an exponential function. The sequence 10, 12, 14, 16, we're adding two each time. So it has a constant difference of two as we're adding two each time. And the sequence 10, 20, 40, 80, we're multiplying by two each time, we're multiplying. So it has a common ratio of two. That's all for us.